Turn. Left. Next. Next hall. Over the back. Tasha and Angela ran down the hall. The beast continued after me. None of us had seen anything like this before. It had six legs, a bisected body like a spider, and was the size of a small car. I jumped to one side and tried to thrust the fireplace poker into the beast. My aim was off, and instead of going through the leg, the poker cut its leg. Perhaps it was the iron in the poker, but the beast reared back and released a sound that brought physical pain to my head. Come on, beast. I have something for you. I saw my reflection multiplied in hundreds of tiny reflective membranes in one of the beast's eye stalks. I raised the fire poker and thrust it into the monster's eye. Magic and magical people. The unnatural order is all around you. Most mortals ignore the obvious signs, trying to hide behind rationality and science. We exist within rationality and science, just at a level you haven't reached. Yet. I am Gabriella, and this is the story of my champion, Harry Strange. You girls okay? <gasps> what was that? It was something from the old gods. Old gods, new gods. It fell before the might of my fire poker. Well, perhaps not, but I did take out one of its eyes. How did you know this room was here? I don't know. There's something very familiar about this place. It's almost as if... Make it stop! Make it stop! Shh, Angela, it would be... Get your hands off of me! I'm getting so tired of your goddess do-gooder new age porn stuff! Not a spider. What? Spiders have eight legs. That thing only has six. Oh, great. Entomology, you remember. Not so clear on your last name. Come on, wizard boy. What is that metaphysical magic of yours going to kick in? Oh, look. Another punk of my hair just came out. Am I molting yet? Wouldn't it be something if I finished my changing hair with you two? Tasha will probably try to make me into a pet. But not you, Harry. You'll kill me. Won't you? The banging stopped. It's probably found another way in. No, I don't think so. Not yet, anyway. That doesn't alter the fact that we are trapped and I am changing. You're right, Angela. If you attack us, I will kill you. But you haven't changed yet. We still have time. Time for what? For me? Are you going to take me to a doctor? Do you think they have a cure for this? There is old medicine that may help. Do you ever get tired of being little Miss Sunshine? Angela? Harry, no. Angela, look at me. Please don't fight me. Just breathe from your center. Three she-demons attacked you and cut your face. That's your story. And I went to Dr. Strega for protection. And how was she going to protect you? Did you just move in? Do you know anything that goes on in this town? She and Strange are magical, enchanted. Hard to believe by looking at him, I know. Magic? Look, I've already heard all about vampires and demons, but I'm a little old for that type of hocus pocus. You hairless apes are so dense. Night Falls is a haven for the enchanted. Doesn't Strange tell you any of this stuff? Are you drunk, Mr. Finney? Because I have plenty of room in my drunk tank. You said he's been showing up in police reports since at least the 70s. <laughs> How is it? Of all creation, you are his favorites. Pigs are more in tune with reality. Get it, pig? Hmm, that's interesting. What exactly is so interesting, Mr. Finney? It's just Finney, Flatfoot. You'll find yourself in a cell right next to Dr. Strega if you keep that up. I'd like to see that. I'd venture to say that Dr. Strega isn't in her cell anymore. Of course she is. This is a police department. 
I've been in telephone booths more secure than this place. Smith, is Dr. Strega still in the conference room? Yes, sir. She hasn't moved an inch since we put her in there. Where's Sordeo? He and his men are in the video conference room on the first floor. Keep an eye on Strega. Let me know if she does anything. She's like the Sphinx, sir. Not moving at all. Nope. Nothing suspicious about that. What? Is she blinking? Really, Mr. Finney? Just Finney. Go ahead, what do you got to lose? Unless you'd like to make a little wager. <sighs> Fine. Smith, is she blinking? Sir, I'm sorry, I don't- I hope you still fit in your uniform, Smith! Because you're gonna be back in it before this day is over! What the hell are those marks on the whiteboard? Cantata scriptum. Enchanted writing. It's a spell to make your boy here think that she was still in the room. This one looks like a cloaking spell. Pull the video. She's been gone a while. Monks from the Vatican, she demons, magic writing. Am I going crazy? Smith, how is it that a freak of nature like Finney knew, but you... Where's Finney? He was right. Shut up, Smith. The only words I want to hear from you are, Oh, here she is. 20 years on the force, and today I lose a perp and a person of interest. And the goddamn Pope wants one of my citizens. Smith, why are you still here? Lock down the precinct. I want this building shut down so tight, a bean fart can't make it out through the air vent. Am I making myself clear? Yes, sir. As I stepped into the bright light of the parking lot, I smelled the fresh air. It was invigorating after the tomb-like environment of the stairwell. Then something exploded in my head. Oh! It was exactly as you said, brother. Of course. Fire doors just don't open by themselves. Get her into the SUV. I'm sure that imbecile Johnson has learned that his men were glamoured by now. I want to be on our plane back to the Vatican in 20 minutes. But what about our familiar? The demon? Leave him. He'll tell Strange what happened. All things serve the Lord. What is it about this place? Why does it all look so familiar? This is interesting. Angela is sleeping. That's good. What did you mean when you said there may be old magic that can help her? Before modern medicine, there was a branch of alchemy dedicated to healing. Some of it was very bad, but all of it was very strong. Strong enough to cure her? What about me? Anything old school to return to my memory? Possibly. What's that in your hand? Foil wrappers. Like the kind you find wrapped around... Pop-tarts? Harry. Hey. Look at this. See that sword on the ground? No, don't touch it! Pope Clement VI was the Pope during the plague in Western Europe. And even though people around him were dropping dead almost hourly, he never caught so much as a sniffle. That's his sword. How can you possibly know that? It's like a curtain has been drawn against a dirty window. I can see more into my past, but... Because the window's so dirty, I can only see it in little patches. <laughs> what? You're starting to sound like the old Harry. I'm starting to see things like the old Harry. I'm not sure that's a good thing. The man you are has many flaws, but in his heart, he's one of the good guys. I'd like to try something with you. Let me put my hands on your head. Really? Right here in front of Sister Angela? Oh, yeah. The old Harry is very close. Jerk. This is some of that old magic. What I am going to do is dangerous. How dangerous? On a scale of one to ten? Don't play with me, Tasha. How dangerous? You could end up with a brain like Goulash. I see. And the downside? You could remember. And you're just now trying this? I've been with you for six months. I said it's very dangerous. Despite what Angela thinks, I know how dire our situation is. I wouldn't suggest this under any other circumstances. 
So, Mind of Mush or Harry Strange? I'm not sure I like either of those choices. You are very close to getting your past back. And if our situation wasn't so bleak, I'd let Providence run her course. Just in case something happens, I've had a wonderful time with you and Angela and the nuns. Well, except for that whole crazed cannibal part. <laughs> it has been interesting. Wait. The things Angela said about you and I, were they true? This is not the time for delays. Tasha touched the side of my head, her hands like a lover's caress. At first, nothing happened. But then... No! Get off me! Tasha and I were blown off our seats as the massive doorway exploded inward. Cannibals swarmed, grabbing Tasha and Angela. I reached out, my hand closing on the first thing I felt. The hilt of the sword of Pope Clement. Ah! Harry, you're glowing! A bright yellow light engulfed the sword and slowly made its way to me. The beast stopped, watching with rapt fascination as the light continued to grow. It burns! It burns! A cannibal put his hands on me and exploded in a mash of blood, guts, and tripe. Tasha waved her hands in the air and blue balls of lightning crackled from her fingertips. Angela, this way! Harry, help us! Please, help us! I felt as if my skin had burned from my body. Have you ever had scalding water from an iron or a pan touch a tiny spot on your skin? Imagine that feeling everywhere and you'll have an idea of what I was feeling, inside as well as outside. My soul felt stretched and swollen, like a sun-drenched whale on some abandoned beach. Welcome back, Harry Strange. Floating in the air in front of me was a cherub, the most innocent and powerful of God's angels. Your memory has returned. It has, mostly. I remember holding the power of a god in my hand. Not a god, but the god, the creator of all. For a moment, you were the hosts of hosts. There was a demon. And an angel. You absorbed more power than a human being, even an enchanted, as powerful as you could hold. Insanity was sure to follow. Your body needed time to discharge the energy of the scepter. We hid your true self deep within you, and... Wait. Where's Tasha? And Angela? They are no longer your concern. You have more pressing concerns. No, I don't. They are my only concern. Are they safe? If things continue on their current course, Angela's transformation will be complete in 32 of your minutes, and Tasha will be dead in 34 minutes. You can't allow that to happen. I won't let that happen. Their lifelines do not play any significant role in the events of interest to us. Tasha nursed you back to health, as we expected. Her role is complete. What do you mean? We placed you by her convent knowing you would find her, she would find you. Your mind and body needed time to heal from the effects of the scepter. We knew she would offer aid, but only if she believed you were incapable of helping yourself. So you hid my true self? To save you from certain madness. Which wouldn't have been necessary if you angels had been able to hold on to your magical junk. How is it you speak to us with such impertinence? Of all the mortals and favorites, some far more pious and deserving than you, you are one of the few who's looked us in the eyes and refused our will. Because I know the rules. Free will, baby, free will. Don't leave home without it. Do you think the others will obey those rules? Those others fall under my blade. I've never raised my sword to an angel. Don't make me start now. You would choose to save an insignificant human rather than obey the will of the favorites of the hosts of hosts after we saved you from certain madness. Madness that was the result of your poor asset control. Many of these things were written long before you became the favorite. There are events happening that will cause the death of all mortals unless you follow the path we've ordained. I'm more of a free will than destiny guy. You are 
are confounded if you believe that you, Harry Strange, have the same right to free will as any other mortal. Everything in the cosmos has a cause and an effect. You, Strange, are no different. Your action or inaction has great consequence for races beyond just the mortals. You must do as ordained. Be that as it may, Cherub, I'm exercising that free will. It's my right as a human. It's who I am. Who you are is the favorite of the angel Gabriella, an honorific that comes with certain responsibilities. Right. And one of those responsibilities needs me. And she wouldn't have if you didn't drop me into her backyard. Last chance, Cherub. Send. Me. Back. What? Well, okay then. Thought that was going to be a little tougher. Sure are a lot of mole men here. At least the cherubs put me somewhere out of the line of fire. Mr. Strange. That voice. I know that voice. <laughs> How are you? Kay? Veructor Krell? I thought... You thought you killed me? No, I am much hardier than you can imagine. As I understand it, your assistant suffered some minor wounds. Alas, I also understand she survived. I swung the sword of Pope Clement at Kay. No way this little troll was going to escape this time. I hid nothing but air. Astral projection! <laughs> That's right, Mr. Strange. Your cherub friends did put you out of the line of fire. Too bad they couldn't do the same with your paramour. I swung again, just in case. <laughs> save your energy, Mr. Strange. You're gonna need it if you hope to save Tasha. Oh, I'll save them. And I'll put a stop to you and your cannibals. Such bravado. I always enjoy our little chats. Take a look here. I followed his voice and looked at a wall of solid rock. At first I saw just the rock and was about to demand that Kay tell me where Tosh and Angela were. Then the wall started to flicker, like the heat vapors on a highway. Angela was pacing, looking more like one of the mole men than a 21-year-old girl. Then I saw Tasha. Her arms were chained above her head, her legs anchored to the ground. These monsters had sewn her lips shut. Very soon, Mr. Strange, Angela will turn. And when she does, the delectable Tasha will be her, dare I say, virgin meal. <laughs> if anything happens to Tasha, I will kill you. Slowly. You know nothing, do you, Mr. Strange? You're like a child who's been given the keys to a muscle car, but you can't seem to get it out of first gear. What are you talking about? Never mind, I'll leave the metaphors to you. Do you want to know a secret, Mr. Strange? This latest attack? The one in the convent in the town? You can take some of the blame for that. We used to be satisfied running the occasional snatch and grab from the town or broken down motorist. But when you stole the scepter of Ostrata from me, that changed everything. Not only did you deny me my place in the sun, you killed off most of my army and all the women. My molemen and I were starving to death. I had no choice but to order them to attack the abbey. But now, we are rebuilding. We have food, refrigeration, and, most importantly, women. Women? Seriously? Hookups for your abominations? That's twisted even for you. Nothing so tawdry, Mr. Strange. I need to rebuild my army. We are down to less than 50 souls, thanks to your barbarism. Human women cannot carry the molemen babies to term. Seems the little boogers start eating their way out before they're fully cooked. Only converted human women can carry the babies to gestation. Take Sister Angela, for instance. Once a woman has been bitten, infected, you might say, the outward changes are just a part of it. Their internal plumbing also changes. It gets bigger, stronger, more powerful. And it doesn't cost six million. Just a little nip from one of my boys. Do you know that this disease is almost 99% communicable? Well, what's the old saying? What doesn't kill you makes you stronger. Agar parum spuria.
You're a sick little monster. <laughs> Said Echo Ver Vester. Yet I am your master. Greatness is never appreciated at first. Soon, Mr. Strange, I will be free of this prison and take my rightful place as ruler of the surface. I don't think so, Kay. Your days are numbered, and I'm the counter. <laughs> I am the counter. <laughs> Very good, Mr. Strange. By my watch, you have about 20 minutes to count before Tasha becomes steak tartar for Angela. And after Angela's gastronomic pleasure, well, let's just say she has a big night ahead of her. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. I'll get them, Kay. I'll fight through your little army of abominations and I'll save Tasha and Angela. And then, just because I'm feeling cranky, I'll feed what's left of your mole men to those spider things. You're gonna wish you had walked out when you had the chance. Ta-ta, Mr. Strange. Perhaps we will see each other soon. Tell me, Kay, why didn't you walk out when you had the chance? Tick-tock, Mr. Strange. Tick-tock, tick-tock. Oh, crap. I need to get somewhere safe. Strega is gone. Strega is gone and now I gotta get somewhere before them wackadoo sisters find me. Where do I go? I can't go back to my store. They'll be watching for me. And I'm sure one of the sisters is watching Strange's office. Yeah, I got it. Haxons. Yeah, Haxons. Haxons is a bar down at the docks in Night Falls. It's run by the Haxon brothers. Some very powerful enchanted folks. To the hairless apes, Haxons is just a biker bar. But to us... It's neutral territory where deals can be made. It's also a safe haven. You can't be touched by any authority if you're in there. And some enchanters have been in the back halls of Haxons for centuries. I was almost there. I think the rule was that once you were within 15 feet of the place, you were safe. Shortly, I would be home free. Why didn't I come here sooner? Hello, Finny. What's the rush? Uh, no rush, Lace. I'm just trying to get to Haxons before happy hour ends. It hasn't started yet. Are you trying to avoid me? What? Me? No, I, uh, I, I was gonna call you later. Uh, let you know what was going on. Really? Yeah. Strange's sidekick escaped the Night Falls Police Department today. Some robots from the Vatican were here. They wanted to arrest Straker. I think she got away. Don't get so close, Lace. You're crowding me. Don't you find me attractive, Benny? Aren't I perfect? Hurt in all the right places? Well, yeah, but... Uh... Listen, Finny. I want to make a deal with you. Oh, right. Like the one Lash gave me. Mm, no. This deal will take care of my biggest problem and your biggest problem. I'm listening. First, though, you have to let me inside you. Harry Strange, Episode 204, A Transitional Place, was written and directed by Tony Serechia and produced by Brianne Ahern. All material is copyright by Tony Serechia and used with his permission. Featured in tonight's cast were Kellen Stennett, Tish Parmalee, Jackie Costello, Tony Scott, Sylvia Galan, Parker Whirling, Dennis Coburn, Tricia Groves, and Joe Roche. Harry's opening theme music was written and performed by Lance Hogan and is copyright by Lance Hogan and used with his permission. Incidental music and character themes were written and performed by Ryan Lassard and are copyright by Ryan Lassard and used with his permission. Contact Ryan at rlassardmusic at gmail.com. Incidental music was written and performed by Kevin McLeod and is copyright by Kevin McLeod and used with his permission. Visit incompetech.com for more of Kevin's music. To keep up with the latest news and information on everyone's favorite private investigator, visit our Facebook page at facebook.com slash harrystrangeradio. Send your questions, comments, and suggestions to producer at harrystrange.com. For the Harry Strange Radio Drama, I'm Joanne Pruden. Good night.